and uh, the rest of the people that was that uh, that burned the other Israelites, they're gonna come back in the kingdom reborn. When they're forced to keep the commandments, when they're forced to keep the commandments, when they're forced to keep the commandments, when they're forced to keep the commandments. So they go. We believe regeneration, according to the scriptures. Regeneration. They're gonna come back in the kingdom because the kingdom of heaven is gonna be here on earth. <coughs> and uh, the rest of the people that was that uh, that burned the other Israelites, they're gonna come back in the kingdom reborn when they're forced to keep the commandments. So they go. We believe regeneration, according to the scriptures. Regeneration. They're gonna come back in the kingdom because the kingdom of heaven is gonna be here on earth. Okay. Yeah, we don't call it Yeshua, but you know we're not gonna argue about that. We call it Yahweh, Yahweh Shah. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Yeah, we don't call it Yeshua, but you know, we're not gonna argue about it. We call it Yahweh, Yahweh Shah. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Yeah, we don't call it Yeshua, but you know, we're not gonna argue about it. We call it Yahweh, Yahweh Shah. It doesn't really matter. You know. Shalom. Call him La Yahweh. By Shem Yahweh Shah. By Shem Kwakadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So if I were to tell you, I'm going to only be truthful to you 90% of the time, or even 95% of the time, and then drop down to 80% accuracy, depending on how I feel that day. Who in the hell, in their right mind, would want to accept me as a trustworthy friend. Think about that. So no lie is of the truth. We're either truthful, we're either walking in wisdom, or we're hanging out in the gray area, in between somewhere, or total darkness. So the truth is pure. It's not watered down or polluted with falsehoods, misdirections, redirections, deflection. And these people that are not really truthful, they like to say what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And before you know it, you got transformers running the earth. Everything is upside down. Confusion transpires and becomes the new norm. Let's go here. We're gonna go here first. Let's go to the book of Sirach, chapter four. The book of Sirach, chapter four. Let's go down here to the bottom. Sirach four. Verse 20, <clears throat> the book of Sirach, chapter 4, verse 20. Observe the opportunity and beware of evil, and be not ashamed when it concerneth thy soul. For there is a shame that bringeth sin, and there is a shame which is glory and grace. Accept no person against thy soul, and let not the reverence of any man cause thee to fall. So man worship, not looking at eternal wisdom and truth. Look at IUIC, a bishop or deacon Asaph. Keep the bishop's name out of your mouth. So he's focused on pleasing his leader, man, rather than doing the right thing. And this is where we go off. Man worship. <coughs> Let's read that again. 
Sirach 4 and 22. Accept no person against thy soul, and let not the reverence of any man cause thee to fall. Many of us can remember growing up in the neighborhood. We looked up to drug dealers. We looked up to pimps, gangbangers. Let's go down to verse 23. And refrain not to speak when there is occasion to do good and hide not thy wisdom in her beauty. For by speech wisdom shall be known and learning by the word of the tongue. So these men that are teaching falsehoods are not walking in wisdom and truth. Wisdom is not convoluted. It's not uncertain. It's not ambiguous, which means hard to understand. Let's read that again. For by speech, wisdom shall be known and learning by the word of the tongue. So we know what type of individual we're dealing with by what comes out of their mouth. We understand their mindset. Let's go to verse 25. In no wise speak against the truth, but be abashed of the error of thine ignorance. In no wise speak against the truth. So there's one truth that goes back to the ancients. Let's keep going. First John 2 and 20. I'm going to go to verse 20. First John chapter 2, verse 20. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. So this doctrine is either in an individual or it's not. There is no shady gray area with someone that's ordained to teach. You're not going to get a mixed signal, so to speak. Can I trust this individual or can I not? It's not like that. But ye have an unction from the Holy One and ye know all things. Let's look at that word unction. Unction comes from the Greek. Strong's G5545. Chisma. Chisma. See? Endowment. An anointing or an endowment. So this is a spiritual wisdom that comes from above. See? Let's go here. John... Three and 27. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 26. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except it be given from heaven. So this is a, a anointing from the fourth dimension. That's why the average person can't get it. They become confused, delirious, and exhausted trying to comprehend this doctrine. Except it come from above. Let's go back. First John 2 and 20. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. So this is a an anointing of understanding. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth but because ye know it, 
and that no lie is of the truth. So a truthful person is just that. He's not an in-between guy. He's not lukewarm. Sometimes walking in wisdom and sometimes not. When it comes to this doctrine, let's jump down to verse 26. Go to verse 26. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. So many of us are being seduced by those that claim to be anointed. That's why the scriptures say, many shall come in my name, saying, I am anointed and shall deceive many. So this is a spiritual seduction when that occurs, being deceived. Verse 26, these things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you, but the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. And ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointed, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. See? So no lie is of the truth. We got to stop getting accustomed to settling for half truth, deception, a 90% solution, a 95% solution is not a solution. So this doctrine forces us to elevate our standards. <clears throat> our standard of acceptance. So the bar gets raised once we have this doctrine. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth and is no lie, and even as it have taught you, ye shall abide in him. So the standard is raised up to a high level, a high degree. Kings don't settle. Kings don't negotiate down, but are moving onward and upwards. Continually. Let's go to Daniel 7, verse 16. <clears throat> Book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 16. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. So those walking in the truth, walking in the light of understanding and wisdom, know the interpretations of the doctrine. It's clear. It's kind of like being in a prison. The prisoners write a letter that goes through the guards. It's written in a language that's esoteric, a hidden language where the prison guards can't understand it. But those that are in a certain ward, like Ward D, Ward C, Ward B or A, can understand each other's writings. So it's encoded. <laughs> and only intended for a select audience. 
Daniel 7 and 16, I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. So the wise can understand this doctrine, not reprobates. See, let's go to Daniel 12 and 10. <clears throat> Book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 10. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So a reprobate spirit is a spirit of darkness, confusion, chaos, ambiguity, or nebulous, which is convoluted, not clear. So you either is or you ain't. There is no gray area when dealing with wisdom and truth. It's pure and not watered down or mixed in with something else. If it is, it's distasteful to the elect, those that this message is intended to reach and comfort. Anything watered down with falsehoods is distasteful to the belly, bitter, and vomit it back up again. Let's close out here. One moment. <clears throat> yeah, I want to go to Sirach 43. <clears throat> the book of Sirach. Chapter 43. Let's go to verse 29. Sirach 43, verse 28. How shall we be able to magnify him? For he is great above all his works. The Lord is terrible and very great, and marvelous is his power. When ye glorify the Lord, exalt him as much as ye can, for even yet will he far exceed. And when ye exalt him, put forth all your strength and be not weary, for ye can never go far enough. So this doctrine is from the king of kings of the universe a spiritual compass, a stick of morality. Who have seen him that he might tell us or who can magnify him as he is? There are yet hid greater things than these be, for we have seen but a few of his works. For the Lord have made all things and to the godly have he given wisdom. See, that's why we went to Daniel 12 and 10. None of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So the Bible is only, <laughs> excuse me, the Bible is only intended for a remnant elect that are anointed with the oil of understanding. That's it. Let's read that again. So around 43, verse 33. For the Lord have made all things, and to the godly have he given wisdom. So the wicked are being confounded. And by the way, the scriptures say that the true teachers will have the ancient garments that go down to our foot. Not these little baby t-shirts. Look like they robbed a damn a baby shower store. 
I mean, this is ridiculous. Turn those back over to the baby shower department. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, Kwakadash. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yasharala and Abad Babal. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.